you know, the history of comic book covers is, is its own kind of history of graphic design and it's well worth exploring. My name is Chip Kidd. I'm a graphic designer and writer in New York City. Huge comic book fan. And I was asked to select a couple of my favorite comic book covers of all time. The first cover I selected is Detective Comics number 31 from September 1939. The artist is Bob Kane. This is really originally how Batman looked. There's been so much commentary in like the last 10, 15 years of how dark Batman has become, especially in films. But I think that's in comparison to the 1960s TV show with Adam West, because that was when Batman first became super popular. And that's very colorful, it's very light, it's very fun. Some days you just can't get rid of a bomb. Batman at first was very fearsome looking. I love the ears on this cover. They, they're just huge. They look like horns. He looks like a demon. Batman was not gonna look like this again for many, many years. Within about a year and a half, the editors at DC Comics decided to, quote, lighten Batman up, and they invented the comic book concept of the youthful sidekick. Batman number nine from 1941, art by uh, Jack Burnley. It's really just a great, iconic situation of, of, you know, Batman and Robin in the spotlight. What always sort of amused me is that Robin's in front. Uh, Batman is not protecting him in any way. It's almost as if he's using Robin for his shield, which I always thought was, was kind of funny. Through the 40s into the 50s and the 60s, culminating in the mid-1960s when, when the Batman TV show did come out, the, the, the stories got lighter and lighter and frankly, kind of more silly. By the end of the 60s into the early 70s, the, the DC editors sort of did a reaction to this. The chief artist behind that era is Neil Adams, who brought a much more realistic rendering to the characters. I think this came out when I was in like third or fourth grade. And I, I love this cover, but I couldn't understand, because Bat, you know, Batman can't fly. So how is he doing this? That brings us to the 80s, and Frank Miller in 1986 wrote and drew, um, along with Klaus Janssen and Lynn Varley, Batman The Dark Knight Returns. And this really did spawn like a revolution, not only in the comics industry, but in the way Batman was perceived. Really, the sensibility that you're seeing here is that of a literary novel, as opposed to a comic book. You're sort of meant to believe that this isn't a metaphorical pose, that he really is leaping this distance. So this is just a handful of comic book covers that greatly influenced me as a graphic designer, and then eventually as a comic book cover designer. It's well worth exploring.